one common fantasy among women that I know a lot of women have, and a lot of people hate to hear this. And I've discussed this on my podcast with other um, sex therapists is uh, the rape fantasy for women. And, um, you know, the idea that a woman, you know, women don't, nobody wants to be raped, but women have these rape fantasies. And this is super common. Why do you think that that occurs? And what does that mean? So I do find in my work that these so-called rape fantasies, and I I don't like that term. Um, I tend to use the term forced sex fantasy or consensual non-consent fantasy because the types of fantasies we're talking about here really have no resemblance to a real world sexual assault. Because when you think Mm -hmm. about these fantasies, the person who is having that fantasy is in control. They get to select who their partner or partners are, the terms and conditions under which the encounter takes place, when it starts, when it ends. And so when you're the fantasizer, you're in control. And it is consensual, even if what you're fantasizing about is forced sex, right? Um, Mm -hmm. So I think it's important for us to reframe our conversations around these fantasies. And I think taking that rape term out of it is, is kind of a helpful first step. And something that I think a lot of people will find to be interesting is that it's not just women who have these fantasies. I find that a majority of self-identified men, a majority of people who identify as gender non-binary report having these fantasies about sex being forced on them. Now, women are more likely to have these fantasies than men are, but most men have had that fantasy before too. And so it's not something that's unique to any one gender. And I think part of it speaks to the fact that submission, sexual submission in general, is a really common sexual fantasy. And coupled with that is this desire to be overwhelmingly desired by someone else. And I think that's why these fantasies are also sometimes called ravishment fantasies. It's because you want a partner or partners who find you so irresistible that they can't help themselves or control themselves. And so I think these fantasies speak to deeper desires for things like submission and for feeling wanted and feeling irresistible more than anything else. And so we need to totally separate and distance this from, you know, discussions about rape and sexual assault in the real world, because that is a totally different and abhorrent thing. Whereas these fantasies are things that have totally different roots and are unrelated. Yeah. I'm glad that you made that distinction. Um, the consent, non-consent, uh, or CNC, as I've seen it abbreviated online is something that has come up a lot lately, especially with the New York times article about, um, Pornhub and, you know, they, they claim that it was raped it was rape, sorry, that it was infested with rape videos where a lot of people argued these are consent, non-consent videos that performers willingly engage in. And this falls under um, the First Amendment. You know, people are allowed to make this kind of content as long as obviously the adults are consenting adults and they're acting out of fantasy and it is not true to life. And um, there's a lot of people that have a really hard time wrapping their head around the idea that maybe a CNC fantasy could be a situation where um, could be a could it be a place for healing? Like I've talked to some performers who said that they like to engage in these kinds of scenes because, like you mentioned before, it allows them to take control over a situation that perhaps they had a traumatic experience with in their past, but reliving it in a controlled, safe environment helps them process that experience. Is that something that you've come across? So I have seen something along those lines in the sense that for many people, their fantasies are therapeutic in a sense Mm -hmm. where they are working through some previous trauma that they've endured. And so sometimes in our fantasies, we put ourselves in positions or we craft scenarios that give us this sense of control that maybe we felt we were lacking at a previous point in life or during a previous experience. So there is something to that idea. But when it comes to actually acting out these 
consensual non-consent or forced sex fantasies, I find that there's actually a lot of concern among my participants about doing that. So while these are extraordinarily common fantasies, a lot of people say, you know, the idea of this is arousing to me, but I don't actually want to act on it because if I do, I have to give up some degree of control to the other person, or I have to place a lot of trust in someone else in order to carry this out. And I'm just not really comfortable with that. So I think we always need to make the distinction between sexual fantasy and sexual desire. And sometimes a fantasy is just a fantasy. It's a thought that turns you on. Maybe you turn to that thought during masturbation or during partnered sex, but you have no desire to actually incorporate it in your real life for a wide range of reasons. One being that maybe you think it's too risky to act on, or you don't think you could trust another partner enough to get that fantasy in a way that would, or to act on that fantasy in a way that would make you feel comfortable and at ease. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.